Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. A lot of the times I show games from uh, top grandmasters and top tournaments. This is a game that I played in uh, a few weeks ago. I have a monthly quad here at my chess center in Binghamton, New York, upstate New York. And it's really interesting uh, game. I'm black. My rating is about 1430. And as white as John Cardinelli. He's a very long-time expert here in Binghamton. He's down about 1,900 now. It's a very interesting game. Um, almost 500 points outrated. Let's see how I do. It's my usual. He plays E4. I always play Scandinavian. Excuse me. Pawn takes. Knight. He screws up the opening here. And I was a little surprised, frankly, that he did. He went D3. I don't know if he miscued or wasn't thinking. Bishop, and I hit the queen. Bishop G4. He goes Bishop E2. I take, queen takes, and then I take the pawn on D3. Now, if he plays C takes... Well, it's it's difficult here, to be honest with you, for him. I don't know what I would do. He wants to keep the queens on the board, so he played C takes, and I just go E6. He castles. I go Bishop E7. I'm up a pawn now, so I'm feeling pretty good. Knight C3, castles. And he goes queen f3, going after my unguarded b7 pawn. Knight to c6, I think, probably would have been better than what I did. I went c6. Probably shouldn't have done that. Knight comes over. I developed my last piece. And he goes bishop f4. Now, like I said, I'm up a pawn, but I'm a little cramped, but it's not that bad. Uh, he's very, very little center for him as far as pawns go. This pawn is isolated even, so I'm really okay. And the computer bears that out. It shows about a, almost a point and a half advantage for me. And I go knight d5. Of course, he doesn't want to trade. And right here is where I miscued. I should have played f5. Forcing him to take. And pawn takes. And then f4. Trapping his bishop, or should say making the bishop take the pawn. Pitting the bishop against the queen and the rook coming down here. And then I just go g5. Now it had a three-point advantage. I missed that completely. I went knight on 7f6. He went a3. I moved my rook over, rook over. And... I like this move. Actually, it's on one of the top. Well, it was on the top here. I've got the computer on off screen. I wanted to get some play. On 98. And for a lot of reasons. Pawn can come up. Knight can come here. And a question mark move for the computer for him is Queen E2. Again. Again, I missed F5. I want bishop d6. And of course, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes. So basically my advantage now is down to a pawn. G3, I get my other rook into play. You get so intimidated by playing higher rated players that you just miss these tactics. And it's really a shame too because I 
had a really good position. Now, it's not terrible. I'm still up a pawn, but I'm only up a pawn and a quarter in score according to the computer. D4. I probably should have played knight takes C3. I just moved the knight back. Rook A, C1. He gets his other rook into play. I go rook E8. Rook C2. I guess he's going to try to double up on the C file. E5. Pawn takes. Queen takes. Queen D3 wants no part in trading the queens. Now, slowly but surely, I'm letting him back in the game. I'm not losing by any means, but it's really a shame. Queen E7. Rook E2. Queen C7. Rook comes over. Now he's got triple. But unfortunately, his queen is leading in that instead of being behind the rooks. I go queen to a5. He moves the king up. And I swing my queen over. Now between knight coming in, maybe rook here, rook swinging over, I'm looking for an attack. Knight e2, he brings his knight around. And I check. He blocks that way, which is very interesting. I guess six one, half six one, half dozen of another. Queen takes, king takes. And I go c5. Knight c3, a6. I'm going to get my pawns rolling on the queen side. I've got a pawn advantage there. a4. Bring my king, start bring my king to the middle of the board. g4. And this is the move I thought about for a while. I wanted to stop that pawn advance, and I went g5. h4 for John. h6, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook d6. Now, my advantage is slowly but surely creeping away. He moves the rook back. I go b5, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, rook b8. But this is where I messed up here. Check. I probably should have moved my rook back to e8. But I played rook takes. Rook takes. Rook d6. And this is where I screw up. The computer here likes rook e1, rook e7. I said to go knight e8. Really crappy decision. Rook d5. F6. He takes the pawn. Now I'm not my pawn is gone that I was ahead. I'm actually down a pawn now. Rook b6 hitting the knight. B3. He's gonna come back here with his knight to guard the pawn. Knight d6. He moves the knight back to guard the pawn. I go rook b4. And this is where he makes a mistake. It's a very natural move. Rook checks. King g6. And then he makes another mistake. King to g3. Computer didn't like that at all. Knight b5. Rook c4. I think to myself, maybe I'm back in here. He plays, and that my decision was rook takes was a horrible decision. Absolutely horrible decision. What I should have done instead is knight takes, king takes, and rook takes pawn. And I'm drawn, and the game is drawn. I missed all of that. I took the rook, pawn takes, knight c7. I'll just go through the rest of the game here. c5, king f7, king e7, and that was the end. And I said the heck with it. Tough break for me. Missed a couple of really good tactics in the opening. I had almost a three-point advantage by move 10, 12. 
But these things happen. You get intimidated by higher rated players. But anyway, folks, just wanted to show you the, the agony sometimes of this game. Chess can be very cruel. So I hope you enjoyed it. Look for other games from me and other world-class players. And as I always say, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.